What's going on, everybody? It's good to see you. I'm Jared, and 2025 was a really cool year for me. I was able to shoot tens of thousands of shots across all the different sets for sizes, from you know my iPhone all the way to Micro Four Thirds, APS-C, Full Frame, and GFX. And so I think I'm qualified for this, like a scientific ultimate 2025 best camera of the year, maybe the best camera of all time, because, I mean, we're just releasing amazing stuff right now, right? So we're going to do this scientifically. And I was a teacher for almost 20 years. And, uh, you know, I use the grading method of F, D, C, B, A, F. Right? Um, I'm adding one, the, the S tier, right, a big tier. But F is bad. You know, this is pretty bad. And I don't like it. And there's not a lot of cameras that are bad today, uh, except for one we're going to talk about. Uh, D is, like, real good. And the reason why I have D, C, B, A, and S uh, outlined is because they're all awesome. Right. All the cameras are really good. If you have a decent camera today, you have one of the best cameras that's ever been made. Right. So D cameras are really good. C or, you know, it's wow. Wow. That's cool. And holy cow is a B. That's even better. Holy cow. Look at this. Um, a is kind of weird, but I'm trying to do this like the right way. Hammer of the gods. Doesn't that just sound really, really cool? You know, like there's a hammer of the gods. That's awesome. And so then S is just, it melts. It like melts your brain, it melts your face off, it melts into your body, like it melts into your vision, whatever you want to do, it just melts, right? I think I'm trying to make that go viral, melts. Like, hey, dude, that melts. I don't think it'll happen, but uh, I can hope. So let's go and, and, and go down. The, the first one is F. And to uh, increase the scientific uh, credibility of this, we're going to be relating these different tiers to movies that are like either this is going to be the worst movie of all time or um, the five best movies of all time, right? Because we've already determined what those are. We know, we all know those universal universal truths. And so uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead into the worst movie of all time is is the new notebook, right? Maybe it's the worst ever. Uh, I don't know. Look at that. I've never seen it, but I look at that video there, that GIF. I, I don't know. I don't, I, it's, uh, yeah, I don't, it's going to be the worst movie of all time. So the X half fits in this category. No, it's not the worst camera of all time, but in general, for me, it was fun to take out, got some cool photos, got some neat effects. I, I really dug the, the multiple exposure mode, right? Neat black and whites. I thought they would look good. The grain was actually kind of decent on some of these. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with it, right? The, the quality was sometimes decent with decent light. And again, that's like the lens flare filter. Um, but in general, it was a camera in 2025 that cost $850, $850. And it focuses very slowly. For me, that was a deal breaker. Like I haven't had a camera since like 2001 that like you go to take a photo and and you miss it, right? Like you're somebody's doing something funny, like, hey, smile for the camera. And they smile and you take the photo and then it's not happening. And so you're like, hey, let me do that again. But the smile's already gone. <laughs> the real smile's already gone. So for me, that was a deal breaker. I wanted this to be something I would have probably maybe, maybe bought it for like 600 bucks um, if it would focus quicker uh, and just, you know, kind of more reliably, it, it, it missed. Um, but this is going to make, this camera is going to make another appearance on our list. So it, it's the only camera that has two categories. So that's very interesting, right? So to prove that the D tier is really good, this is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's very, very good. Commando, right? Nobody's ever seen action movies like this since this was made. Uh, there's nobody that's ever walked through a field of roses and blew them away. Um, there, no one has been this skilled at using a rocket launcher, right? Just doing spin moves and then boom. Nobody's ever done that, right? Just like these are really, really good. The iPhone, there's never been, you know, a, a camera like that that we could take everywhere in our pocket that does a really good job, okay? I don't like the iPhone most of the time. Kind of flat, artificial sometimes, but this Leica Lux app that I downloaded is really cool. Um, I, You know, most of my photography, all of it recently is based on projects, and I give myself a lot of projects. And the iPhone project, right, that I have is taking my mom to the hospital, um, I've been taking her a lot recently, and I thought I'd do uh, some photos of that. And regular iPhone shots are really cold and not cool. Uh, these match the coldness of the hospital, but they add a little bit of grain, a little bit of feeling, that depth of field. Oh, Dropbox, I don't care. Um, you know, it, it, it's just pretty cool. Uh, there's my mom, some neat shots. That depth of field blur is really cool. It's artificial and doesn't work all the time. Right here, it missed where the, you know, I probably should have been blurry, whatever. Um, and then this is a, a building that's being built downtown. There's a lot of detail there, right? Some cool fog light. 
Uh, the grain is kind of neat, everything about it. So it can do pretty good stuff. And then even a photo like this is just the neat reds and uh, those stripes with some kind of cool shadows that I saw in the hospital parking lot. I just want to show you that I engaged the 48 megapixel mode and uh, you can just see how detailed it is. There's a ton of detail. It looks sometimes weird. I'm not saying the iPhone's perfect, but there's more there than people sometimes give it credit for. All right, so great stuff, even though it's in the category of D. Um, also in the D is some of the new APS-C and full frame stuff from Canon. I just don't really dig Canon anymore. The image quality, the focus, all that stuff's really good. Uh, but, you know, it's like, I don't know. They're just not fun. I, and I never got used to the grips. I just don't like the grips anymore, even though I shot with Canon for many years uh, back in the day. Um, so I'm just, they're great cameras. I'm just sticking them here. I use them a lot because I was trying to get, uh, I was trying to figure out whether I was going to go. This year was my big transition to find a new system for nature and wildlife. Uh, my choice just over, I, I took it over for everything, but I tried everything out. Like I tried all the new stuff, like the R6 Mark II, um, which was really, really good. Also, all these, you guys know me for a lot of my Fuji stuff. And I used a lot of that this year. I had two X-T5s last year and I had a, one this year before I sold it. Um, I sold all these already. Uh, wonderful image quality, all that stuff. But the focus kind of, Got me, and I just, uh, I fell out of love with Fuji colors a little bit. Like, I just kind of, not that they're not great, they're really good, but I realized that everyone's really good, and everyone has really cool color things in there. Like, it's, there's a lot more out there than you think. Um, they're not the only game in town, and uh, their autofocus fails me too much. Also is, oh, is that it? I thought that was, I thought we had more in this category. No, let's go to the next one then. That's the Ds. We're going to go to the next level up, which is the Cs. And that is Terminator 2, right? That's one of the best movies of all time, the top five. A lot of people are going to say this is a controversial move because it should be a little bit higher, but I'm going to, I'm going to disagree. One of the greatest villains of all time, one of the greatest villains of all time in the first movie turned into one of the greatest heroes of all times in the second movie. How does that happen? Great lines, wonderful movie. It's a wow movie. And so is the X-106. I don't have photos here because I didn't shoot much with it. I had it for a year and a half. And... Um, I fell out in love with it, even though I recognize that it is an incredible, incredible piece of technology. It's a cool camera, uh, and it's not even priced that crazy for what it is. I think it's a cool, I think it's a good, good camera. I had a lot of fun using it, but I just didn't use it that much. Also in this category, and I, I thought about making this thing lower, all right, but the more I thought about it, the more I liked it, okay? So this is one of the cameras, the X-Half and this camera, the Fuji GFX 100 RF, I thought about like a lot. And the reason I thought about it is because I don't like the 100 RF because the lens is not great. Like I don't think at like 28 millimeters, right? Equivalent um, straight shots. I just don't like very much compared to my other GFX stuff, but as a project camera, right. To go out and do use it as my 65 by 24 camera. Holy, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be really cool, right? You go out into all these small towns and have a small light camera and you're still getting 50 megapixels with each, with each one of these, you know? And then you look at the 100 megapixels and you just get all this color, this incredible color, even though this is at night, like ISO 800, it soaks up so much information. The color that's in this photograph, the lack of grain, 100 megapixels of this is stunning, especially when you put it on the wall. And, you know, people realize that you can get really close and see each tiny individual leaf, uh, which is the promise and power of GFX, right? Same thing right there. And um, it was also surprisingly good at focusing and uh, reacted really well at a protest I went to. Did a really good job. I used, you know, a higher, um, a wider depth of field, so like F8 or F, uh, you know, 9 or something like that for a lot of these. But it still responded well and did not crazily misfocus at all and these photos are really good the power of gfx again is that you could take a photo like this um, you could crop it just like this one little spot right here i'm putting the cursor around crop it like that and then you get uh you know something like 20 megapixels which is or you know 15 which is still good enough for anything on the internet and e even printing stuff so that's the power of GFX, and the RF is small and light. I just didn't dig the lens in general. and uh, So spending that much money on a inter non-interchangeable GFX when, when you can get, like, other GFXs for cheaper that do better. Um, I tried Sony's. I don't like Sony's. They're awesome. The quality is amazing. <laughs> I just don't dig them. I just don't. Uh, whatever. Their ergonomics, I just don't dig them. I just don't like them. Um, another one that I put back on the list is X-Half. 
And the reason why this is back on the list, even though it can't focus, is because I could think of a cool project. So imagine the contact sheet. This by itself made me so happy when I saw it. There's a lot of resolution here. Right? There's a good amount of resolution. This thing would print really big. And what I could do is I could imagine an art show where I'm shooting different neighborhoods in Omaha and each frame matters because that's all I get. And that's the, the limitation of the project. I'm going to work on my skill, my composition with a camera like that, print this really big. Um, I think that would be really cool as a big project. Sell the prints at the art show, all that stuff for people's neighborhoods that they are in. Uh, talk and have that camera around your neck, you know, kind of make it part of the show. That would be fun. And I love this, right? I love that idea. And so, yeah, I'll probably buy one once it's a little bit less money. Okay, so we got to we gotta wait a little bit. Next here is, uh, this is really incredible stuff. Uh, this is Big Trouble, Big Trouble in Little China. If you haven't seen this movie, you need to see it because uh, it has been scientifically proven to be one of the top few movies of all time, right? Incredible lines. Uh, you know, if we're not back by dawn, call the president. Nothing better than that, really, ever been said. Amazing kung fu street fights, alley fights, awesome special effects that are 100 years ahead of their times. Look at that. Unbelievable. No one's ever had, like, a, a pinky power, right? Like, two pinkies crossed, and then they're playing, like, a video game, right? They're in the, in the, he's fighting the other guy, like, Street Fighter. Uh, no one's ever done that. That's just unbelievable. And then this is one of the best scenes ever. He's going to go into battle. Proved everybody how cool he is, and then he knocks himself out for pretty much the whole battle. Really, really good stuff. Um, and so, yeah, that's Big Trouble in Little China. Hammer the Gods level stuff. And that's the GFX 100S, 100S2. I told you, these are not all released in 2025. Uh, but the GFX 100S2 and the 100S are incredible. You can look at a single frame. That's a 100 megapixel frame. Megapixel frame. Get really, really close, and that is still printable big. Look at the color. Look at the uh, just all the detail, and then that's like 200%, and you still get amazing clarity, contrast. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the color, again, we're zooming in incredibly uh, close, and that's, that's just truly stunning. Next is the OM-1 Mark II. The OM-1 Mark II is, uh, I don't talk about it nearly as much, but it is one of the best cameras. I put it up there with the anything from anybody else as far as like speed and power and all that stuff. Um, just unbelievable frames just put some good glass on this thing you're going to be rocking it does everything well from nature to tracking to any kind of autofocus it just rocks really truly rocks a lot of fun to use in every aspect uh, also on this tier right this is big trouble in little china tier and the z8 z9 so this is what i went to for a long time for quite a while i was thinking that this was going to be my jam and it is an incredible camera I got some of my favorite photos of the year, some really, really amazing things. That's with the macro, uh, really 45 megapixels right there. Awesome. This is just with the, you know, relatively kit, the kit lens, the 24 to uh, 120 uh, F4, right? Uh, amazing. Incredible quality. Look at the contrast. All of it is amazing. It's a fun walk around uh, camera, just heavy. Does a good job, but it's so heavy and uh, tracks everything, you know, just pretty much perfectly and effortlessly. It's just big and heavy, okay? Uh, I mean, the tracking, though, my goodness. It was tracking this turkey behind the flowers. You know, the little boxes on its eye. It could, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. Kind of like the A1, R5, Mark II. Also, one of the greatest cameras ever used that I almost never talk about is the G9 II, the Panasonic G9 II. Small and light. Uh, you know, it's the body of a full frame, but it's quite a bit lighter, and it's still fairly small super creativity, the, the ability to do those LUTs, right, and download them quickly is awesome. This is just a shot that I took uh, that is using a bunch of different LUTs. Look at how different those looks are. Look at how different these looks are. And this is using the 100 picomixel mode. So what, what's awesome is you can use those modes in your JPEG is the LUT is applied to it. So you're getting like 100 megapixels uh, when you put a tripod on. <laughs> it's just a, it's an incredible camera. Really fun to take around. It's a pretty good performer as far as wild, nature and wildlife. Not great. Not like the OM-1 Mark II. You can see it's a little soft. The focus was not up to par, but decent. And just, a, you know, really great sensor. This is one I took in Marfa, Texas. And when you start to look in, unbelievable amounts of, you know, micro uh, contrast and detail and clarity throughout. You can see this mountain, all the signs. You can read the Marfa sign way in the back. 
And this is just a single file. There's just so much detail there. And all those, uh, the mountains in Big Ben, uh, just what wonderful stuff, right? So the G9 II is one that I need to pay more attention to because it's a, it's a really kick-ass camera. Now, the, the ultimate tier, Aliens. Okay, this is the best movie in, in history ever made. Get away from her, you bitch, is one of the greatest lines, probably the greatest lines. Lots of action. Look at fire, flamethrowers, fire. It, you know, it had themes of motherhood. Great movie. This, that movie melts, right? That thing melts your face off, right? And so does the OM3, for me at least. And the OM3 is just uh, the coolest camera I've ever used. It goes with me everywhere. Gets me just easy urban shots and fog. Wonderful high ISO ability. Great at night. Great in every other situation. It's always with me. I went to my mom's house next to, in one of her neighborhoods. There was this, this beautiful scene. The camera's small and light. I just shot that, and it's great. Goes on all my adventures with me. This photo right there is unbelievably cool. I love this thing with the light coming in, the cool purple in the sky. It really looked like this. Crazy cool scene with those yellows. And this would print to be like, you know, I could print this at 60 inches, and it's going to look absolutely phenomenal. I put a video. I made a video about printing OM stuff really big. I'll link it down into my description. But if I could print this stuff so big, why do I need big, giant, heavy cameras like the Z8 and Z9? Incredible moments. This was just with the 90 macro. It was literally in the back seat because it's very small and light. So when I went to my mom's one day, it was after a rain, and I was able to take this really amazing shot. Uh, one of my cool flower shots of the year that, that just makes me happy because it was my mom's garden. It's such a soft, beautiful photo, right? Uh, it goes everywhere with me. It does everything. All my trips. You know, I can go to concerts. It's small and light. That's just with the, uh, what is that, the 75 1.8, I think, or the 45 1.8. Uh, incredible, uh, amazing stuff that you can do with these things. And the OM3 is still a wonderful wildlife camera. It's just as good as the OM1 Mark II. The focus is just as fast. Really incredible stuff. Eye tracking. Uh, this photo right here is just kind of crazy. I love this thing. Uh, the the camera's small, light, goes everywhere. This is with the 300 F4 Pro, which is not small and light, but when it just sits in your back seat, for when you drive by scenes like this, you can go get it. And you can see the bird in the nest. These guys running around flying, doing crazy stuff, being lunatics, and I could get it because this stuff is with me. And so the camera, right, the best camera you have is the one that you have with you. Uh, if, if that happens to be the OM3, you have one of the best cameras that you've that's ever been made, right? And the camera that I love, the computation modes, I love the ability to get higher megapixels. The color dial or the creative dial is incredible with all the different colors. It's like Fujifilm on steroids. The natural colors out of the OM3 and the OM1 Mark II are uh, just wonderful. So is the Nikon stuff. And so that's it. That's the, the, the big announcement is that the OM3 is the camera of the year based on scientific method, methods uh, related to all these classic and uh, tried and true scientifically proven to be the best movies of all time. Um, it all correlates. I thought this video would be uh, really cool for the five people that would go all this time to the end. Thank you. Subscribe, all that stuff. Check out my newsletter. 2026 is coming up, and it's going to be a rocking year. We're going to do really cool stuff. I'm going to get a little bit away from the gear and focus more on some adventures and how you can use the gear that you have to do good things and cool things and fun things. So we're going to go We're going to go a little bit more there. So uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, we'll see, we'll see you guys later.